Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're still talking about logarithmic functions and we're gonna focus on some properties of logarithmic functions that are gonna help us algebraically manipulate our logarithmic and exponential expressions and equations. Some of these properties are gonna be really helpful in helping us solve exponential and logarithmic equations. And we're also gonna see that these new logarithmic properties are really gonna come from some old exponent properties that we should already know and be familiar with. And so what the product property for exponents says is if we have two exponentials multiplied together with the same base, maybe one is raised to the power of say m and the other is raised to a different power say n, then we can write this as a single exponential raised to the power of m plus n. So if you multiply exponentials together, you can add their exponents and write it as a single exponential function or Sometimes we also use this in reverse. If we have something like x to the power of m plus n, we can break it up as the product of two exponents, x to the m times x to the n, right? And this property works no matter what the numbers m and n are equal to. So our next property for exponents is the quotient property for exponents. It's very similar to the product property up above, but it says if you have x to the power of m, divided by another exponential of the same base, like x to the power of n. In this situation, instead of adding the exponents, we subtract the exponents, and we can write this as a single exponential, x to the power of m minus n. The third uh, exponent property that we want to work with and can eventually convert to a logarithmic property is the power property of exponents. That says if we have x raised to some power m, and we raise that to another power, say n, well, that's the same as raising x to the power of m times or multiplied with n. Right, and these are not the only exponent properties that we uh, learned about a while ago, right? We had some rules for negative exponents and things like that, but these are the three exponent properties that are gonna have logarithmic counterparts. And so now let's go ahead and write down the corresponding logarithmic properties. These properties share the same names. And if we want to differentiate between the two, we just kind of say, well, it's the exponent product property or the logarithmic product property or the product property for logarithms instead. And when we write down these uh, logarithmic properties, we're going to have some other quantities involved, uh, little b, big M, big N, and uh, little p. And when we write these properties down, we're going to assume that uh, b, m, and n are positive real numbers with b not equal to one, right? That's just gonna be our base here. We talked about why it can't be equal to one earlier. And p is gonna be some uh, power, it's, but the p can be any real number, but b, m, and n are positive with b not equal to one. And so our product property for logarithms says if we have log base b of some product of two numbers, m times n, we can actually break this up as the sum of two logarithms instead. So the product property for logarithms says that if we have log base B of a product, we can write that as the sum of the logs instead, and it also works in the opposite direction. If we have the sum of two logarithms with a common base, we can combine those two logarithms added together as a single logarithm just by multiplying the insides or inputs of those logarithms together. That's gonna to be the new input for our single logarithm. We'll prove all these logarithmic properties after we write them all down, and we're gonna see that this comes directly from the product property as well as the inverse relationship between exponentials and logarithms. So up next is our quotient property for logarithms. And what it says is if we have the log of a quotient, that is log base B of M divided by N, we can break it up into two logarithms similar to how we did for the product property, except now we take the difference between the logarithms instead of adding them together. So it's always gonna be the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. So log base B of M divided by N is equivalent to log base b of m minus log base b of n. And just like with the product property, we can work this in reverse. If we have the difference between two logarithms, we can write it as a single logarithm, where that new inside of that single logarithm is the quotient of the insides of the original two logs. 
And so the last property for logarithms that we're going to add to our list and write down here is what we refer to as the power property for logarithms. And the power property for logarithms is probably the most important of the three here when it comes to solving exponential equations. And so what the power property says or allows us to do is it says if we have log base b of m raised to some power of p, we can bring that power of p out front of our logarithm. So it comes out of the logarithm and out front as a factor. So we write that as p times log base b of m. And why this power property is going to be so useful is when we come to solving exponential equations, we're going to have some constant number raised to some variable power, right? x is in the exponent. And the problem with solving that equation is x is in the exponent. We don't know how to get it out of there and how to find it. Well, this property is going to help us get that variable out of the exponent and make so solving exponential equations something we can actually do. All right, so these logarithmic properties are going to be some really powerful algebraic tools that are going to help us manipulate our expressions working with uh, logarithms or exponentials. But we want to make sure that these uh, logarithmic properties are true and these tools actually work. So we're going to go ahead and prove uh, at least one of these logarithmic properties kind of rigorously. And we're only proving one of them, not all three, because the proof for the other two use essentially the exact same arguments, just moved around a little bit, depending on if we're uh, doing some subtraction or some multiplication instead. So the same kind of argument can be made for all three of these properties. So we're just going to go ahead and prove one of them. All right, so let's go ahead and prove that first property for logarithms, our product property for logarithms. So we're going to take the statement of the product property for logarithms, log base b of the product m times n, is equal to log base b of m plus log base b of n. And so the way our proof is going to go, we're just going to rewrite this in equivalent ways using some of our already known properties of logarithms as well as our exponent properties until we rewrite it in an equivalent way as something that is undeniably true and then that'll complete our proof. And so there's lots of different uh, strategies we can use to prove these properties. I'm just going to choose one route and go ahead and prove it. And so the route I'm going to take is starting with this logarithmic equation, we're going to rewrite it in its exponential form. And so this might seem a little bit weird because when we've kind of switched forms for our logarithmic equations into their exponential form, we always had a single logarithm on one side equal to a single number on the other side. And so here we're just going to treat our right hand side as that single number, like just X or Y, depending on how you want to think of it. And so we know is that if we have log base b of m times n, and that's equal to some number. What that number is equal to, what comes out of our logarithm, is the power we have to raise our base to in order to get the number inside of our logarithm. So if we raise our base b to this number that comes out of our logarithm, that is the sum of these two logs, log base b of m plus log base b of n, that gives us what was inside of our original logarithm, the product of m times n. And now that it is in its exponential form, we can start using some of these exponent properties, mainly the product property for exponents, right? That's how we get the product property for logarithms. Here we're going to use our product property for exponents in reverse of how we have written it. So we think of this as x to the power of m plus n. Here is our m. Here is our n. And so we can break this up as the base times the first term. So that'll be b to the power of log base b of m. Now multiplied by the base b now instead of x to the power of our second term. That's going to be log base b of n. And we know that that's still equal to the right-hand side that we started with, m times n. And now to really finish this off, well, we just have to remember what's going on here. We have b to the power of log base b of m multiplied by b to the power of log base b of n. But what we really see here is we have a exponential function composed with a logarithmic function. We have a function composed with its inverse. They undo each other. They cancel each other out. So from this first factor, b to the power of log base b of m, we cancel out and are left with m. That's multiplied by the simplified version of the second factor, 
b to the power of log base b of n simplifies to just n. And so, well, now we've shown that m times n is equal to m times n. That is certainly true, and that completes our little proof of our product property for logarithms. Right, you can run through the exact same steps for the quotient and power property, but at some point in order to manipulate after you switch from logarithmic form to exponential form, <clears throat> you'll have to rewrite it using the quotient or power property and then finish it off from there. So we should be convinced now at least that that first product property for logarithms is true. The same line of argument proves the quotient and power properties. And now that we have these properties at our disposal, we can really take advantage of them and use them to help us solve equations or manipulate exponential and logarithmic expressions.